Professor Veklav Smil, you are welcome to the third workshop uh, in uh, Arrestes Foundation. Uh, the, the workshop is entitled Economic Challenges for Energy. And we would like to ask you um, a question regarding the, the, the topic that we have here uh, these, these days. So okay, well, let's start with the first question, uh, if you wish. Um, let's start with what is the major challenges for the future energy system? Uh, it depends whom you are talking about, because energy consumption is so unevenly distributed around the world that the problems of countries like China, India, Brazil are very different from problems of countries like European Union or North America. I would say briefly that problem for all the rich, affluent countries of the world, EU, Japan, US, Canada, is how to use less energy. That's the first thing which we should be concentrating on. We don't need to use more energy. We already use too much. Well, the problem for places like China, India, Brazil, is to how to use more energy, because they still need to improve the quality of life, uh, to improve uh, education, to meet the expectations of people for better living, they need to use more energy. So they are fundamentally different problems. You know, one set of countries should use less, the other set of countries should use more. I'm not even talking about Africa, because in Africa, people have to use much, much, much more, because we are already at this level, right? China is at this level, India is at this level, and Africa would be somewhere below the table. Right? So it depends. So people always make this mistake, saying, like, you know, there's a universal solution. There is none. You know, it very much depends on what countries, what economies we are talking about. Okay, so let's stay in the Occident, you know, yeah. uh, developed countries. And um, energy use is what was related or correlated usually with the economic growth. Well, it is. That's what it is. If you, you should think about economic, basic, economy is a basically, you know, there is no such thing as economy fundamentally. Fundamentally, from a physical point of view, everything is a flow and consumption of energy. You cannot have any economy without consuming energy. So the first thing first, right? Everything we do is predicated on energy consumption, really, right? Yeah. However, that doesn't mean that High quality of how standard of, of living, high quality of life depends on a constantly increasing energy consumption because we've already reached a level where we consume certainly more than enough to satisfy these basic quality of life challenges. And at the same time, the higher consumption is creating only one thing, greater environmental problems. Really. So if you look at the you know, it's a broader view of this quality of life is heavily dependent on the quality of environment. And increasingly high energy consumption is actually acting negatively on the quality of environment. And so on the other end, of course, you know, we need to employ people because although the population growth has slowed down or basically it's stable or even slightly declining in some, count uh, some counties in the West, still you need to employ people. And for economic activity, you still need more energy consumption. So it's a very difficult challenge, very difficult challenge. Right? Perfect. Do you think that technology or future technologies could uh, in some way uh, reduce or tackle the issue that we talk about? Yes and no again, because we've been through it many times today, right? So it always improves, let's say not always, but frequently you have these new uh, technical developments and they tend to decrease generally, they tend to decrease the intensity of energy consumption, right? So, uh, you know, the better engines consume less gasoline per kilometer, right? Airplanes are an excellent example, right? This new Boeing 787 that consumes 25% less energy to fly from A to B than former series of Airbus and so on. So we introduce these machines, these processes, which consumes less energy, but this does not necessarily mean that we actually consume less energy. Because what, what happens is when you have a device which consumes less energy per kilometer or per task performed, things will become cheaper. And when that flight will become cheaper, then more people will want to fly and the total energy consumption will increase. So what we are doing with many of these innovations that the relative energy consumption is going down per unit of product, per kilometer, 
transported, but the absolute consumption is going up, really. So this is one of the fundamental problems we have, that by making things more efficient, actually, in the long run, we are increasing the energy consumption. Perfect. So uh, thank you very much for enlightening us with your... Thank you.